Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 1. You can find this on YouTube if you put in the specific episode. You will not find it on Prime Video anymore. And this, of course, is a recap, so you won't see in the entire program. Just the highlights and the art. All right, let's get started. And please leave a thumbs up and subscribe, because that would uh, be really enjoyable for me. And maybe for you too. So let's look at who we've got today. Here's our first person up. You have to submit a landscape in order to be accepted into the program. And many people apply over and over and over again. This is a sweet little gem of a painting, which we're going to see closer up in just a second. This is a very interesting episode because it is so varied in terms of style and interpretation. So this has a lot to do with forms. That's what this person is interested in. And, you know, this is my language. I really like this kind of simple... It's not simple to do this, but, but the result is, is not, not heavy on detail, which I sort of um, enjoy. Much more emphasis on color and shape. Here's the next one up. This is a very unusual landscape. And, of course, landscape doesn't mean pastoral hills and valleys. You know, it can be industrial. It can be any slice. Uh, basically, walk out, outdoors and, and landscape exists. So this one is much more detailed. Yeah, you can see that here. It's, I really like it just because I, I can't think of another painting where someone decided to take this little slice and present it to us. So I kind of like that there's, um, you know, this you can see through the artist's eyes with what they wanted to share with us or what captivated them. Next one up looks very much like it's coming from a sketchbook. Um, and it's pencil or graphite on, on paper. I never know how to judge this kind of work compared to painting work because, you know, the final prize is a commission, painting. And so it has to show up in a gallery and it, it has, and, and I just, this just is not very impactful. You know, it's all based on line, not based on form. So it's a complete opposite of what our first painter was doing. Here's the next one. This is very unusual. That's what I'll say about this. It seems to be an unusual subject and a really unusual color palette. And in this, this episode, she does exhibit a very un, unusual color palette. And I'm curious to hear what you think of it. Well, let's take a closer look up at this. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a surreal landscape. You know, we've got a land shark and uh, mm, clouds and I don't know, you know, interpret it as you will. So once again, this is, the, you know, an artist coming with a different ver vision of how they see the world. Now, this kind of painting is, oh, this is where I live. I love this kind of painting. The reason I love this kind of painting, and I know if you've watched my channel, you're going to say, well, Joe, that doesn't make sense because you always talk about color and you love color overall and lean toward colorists. But what I really base my art on is form. And this is so stra strong in the, the design elements of light against dark. I mean, if you really squint your eyes, this works as an absolute abstract. It doesn't have to be uh, anything that you identify. Just the, the understructure of the architecture of this painting is strong and bold and solid, and I really like that. Now, this is another person who's using, I think, some kind of charcoal. So again, we're talking about black and white. The color range isn't nearly what we had in the previous. You know, the previous painter went from black all the way to white. This exists in more of the mid areas. Here it looks like there's more variation. Uh, it's got a lot of energy and, uh, and it is an urban landscape. So as you can see, we have really, really, really different painters with different styles and different interpretations. So that should make a fun episode. Well, it should make a fun episode, but let's see if it does. <laughs> They're painting Chartwell House in Kent, which I guess was the home of Winston Churchill for a period of time. It's absolutely beautiful. They are very far away from the house. They are the pods, you can see, because uh, we like to have an aerial view whenever we can. It's a huge house, right? Wow, really big house. Um, so they're pretty far away, which is, which is good. Yeah, that's what they're looking at. And I like that because you have this big form of, of red brick surrounded by green foliage. You know, this is this is a recipe for success. <laughs> Everybody should be able to nail this pretty successfully. 
and there we can see the vantage from their pod. See how far away they are? They really are. Now it's a beautiful day, so there's going to be sun, and that's going to give them shadows and more forms. So they were very lucky. Yeah, because, you know, that's not always the case. Oftentimes we're dealing with very, very gray days and very, very gray lights. Uh, what did I say? Skies? Light. No, gray, gray light, which is very flat. Okay, here's our first painter up. She did three different landscapes. Uh, she probably spent a lot of time, my guess is, on the first one. She's the one that we saw at the very beginning who really simplified forms. So I identify with her. This would have been me. I, there's no way I could have taken the four hours to make one painting. Yeah. So, um, you know, I love that she embraced the place. Um, yeah, I, re I really respond to her painting. She's using a very big brush here. She's not get getting bogged down on details. Um, that was a really nice choice of warm orange to go with those darker um, and cooler um, greens. Overall, you know, it just it's just very pleasing to my eye. And I know many people who watch these, not many, but most people are extremely complimentary, but many people accuse me of um, liking pretty paintings, and um, justly so. I do like pretty paintings. <laughs> because I always look at these as how, you know, is this something I would put on my wall? I also look at them with a second criterion of would I purchase this? And boy, that's a higher bar for sure. Now this is the different, this is the person of that really unusual colored one with the, the pink little house form and the shark. So I don't understand the underpainting going on here at all. You know, why you would, would um, prime the, the canvas with that turquoise and that that red, it's, I, 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 you know, I, color-wise, I just don't get it. I um, love the diagonal of the whole piece. Fills the page nicely. I'm guessing that she didn't complete things, but boy, she can really do detail if she wants to. So um, I, I'm going to go with that. I think this is her stylistic choice. She likes kind of unusual colors and, and, and likes to present things not as they are, maybe, but maybe to emphasize what, what is of her interest. That is completely interpretive. That might not be the case with her at all. I don't know. Here's another slice of it. Um, you, I'm, uh, this has quite a bit of black and gray in it. And black and gray, for my eye, always dull things down. So overall, you're, for, to me, your, your painting, although will have a very strong value range, which is really great, it tends to get duller over time because you got black in there and black kind of corrupts everything, as will white if you use too much. All right, so you, if you've watched my channel, you know I love this painting because this is, the guy showed up, he did a beautiful job. This is the fellow who had that really strong painting at the beginning, which I said was sort of, um, uh, as a, it worked as an abstract as well. Boy, I didn't know he was a colorist. Well, he is. This is just, this just sings. It's just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Look how warm those stones are, you know? And by warm, I mean that he tilted his grays toward warm. There's a lot of yellow in those grays. And yet in areas like this, he's very free, which adds a spontaneity. And, and he's using his whole, whole arm, not from the wrist down. He's all in. He's giving it his all, and, and I just think he did a fan, absolutely fantastic job. This is what I'm looking for when I come to Landscape Artist of the Year. So, hashtag Joe is always wrong. You know this person's not going to win, right? Of course not. It's too conventional. It's too good. <laughs> they're not going to go for this, and I know they're not. But it doesn't matter because he knows he is the best painter that showed up today, so good for him. Here's the next one up. This is also pretty diffused in terms of its forms. It's also considerably duller in terms of color than the last one. And that's just what's happening here is whereas we saw someone who kind of allowed white to uh, corrupt their color, I mean black to corrupt their color, white, that's what's happening here with, with white. And not, not to a terrible extent, but it's only when you see it next to the one where someone did not use white in order to their value choices that you can see there's a real difference in terms of brightness and dullness and you know brightness and dullness is absolutely subjective and you know something I'm interested in when it comes to temperature and brightness and dullness you know warm and cold brightness and dullness I'm just very interested in that okay here's the next person up he's the one who had that pencil 
um, sketch at the beginning. I, this is an incredible piece of draftsmanship. It's just so darn good. I can't imagine being able to draw this well. Again, I don't know how you judge this against the different color uh, entries going on, but I think it's really exciting. It has the same exciting that is the piece that he entered with has. So it shows consistency of style and commitment to um, to his own personal way of showing us how he sees the world. Absolutely beautiful. Maybe he'll decide to pick up a colored pencil sometime. Who knows? <laughs> oh, geez. I don't know. Here's the person who had that. She had a, a, like a book that you opened up, and it had um, two pages of, of basically sketch. And to me, this is a sketch. You know, to me, this is an underpainting. I don't know how to judge this against painting. I know I've said that many, many times. Um, maybe you can help me with that. I, I just I just don't know how you do it. Uh, I think we're going to see maybe one more painter or maybe a slice of this. Let's take a look. Yeah, here's a slice of it. Yeah, you know, I like that little slice better than I like the whole piece. Um, this is this is a tough one for me. Um, love her line work. And, you know, she... she she would be, this would make a great engraving of some kind. Uh, but uh, what will the judges do with it? Uh, I don't know. My guess is they'll really love it. All right, now the final judging begins. Now the final judging, it's been, they've had four hours of actual time on task, which means an hour for lunch, which you can paint the subject during lunch if you want to. And it's an exhausting day because you have to get to this place. You got to stand outside, um, do the painting. And then, I don't know how long the judging takes, but you can see just by the light and by the shadows that it's much later in the day. My guess is that they start at like maybe 10 o'clock in the morning, and, and by now, we're, we're talking about four in the afternoon or something. Um, here's the first one up. She's the uh, person who did the three paintings, and I was excited to see her here and surprised to see her here as well. But, um, but I love all three. I think they really all three belong together. I don't know... Uh, I think the middle one stands on its own, but I don't know that the other two do. Here's the next one. Very happy to see him here as well. Um, and, you know, my favorite painting hasn't shown up yet, and I don't think it will. So let's see who our last finalist is. There's our last finalist, yeah. Um, so, so now we know who the finalists are. And the next thing that we get to do is we get to see the artists with the original painting that they entered the program with and then what they did today. And that's what they'll be judged on. So the question is, who will win? We're gonna find out very, very soon. So who will win? Well, remember the painting on the left, and in this case, I don't have a painting on the left. This was her entry painting. And we saw this at the very beginning, much more simple forms than other painters have done for entries. But that's, that's the way it is. Um, and not much of a difference between what she did as an entry and what she did when she came today. So time constraints are not a problem for her. And I just, I just find this a really pleasing array. So that means that the judges probably won't. <laughs> Remember, the judge is always looking for something new, something different, um, and, and that's what they like. Again, these are both really impactful, really beautiful pieces. Again, I don't think the time constraints really mattered. Look at how, how really great the one that you had all the time in the world is on the left and the one you only had four hours for today. That's just amazing to me. And here's the last one. Now, this person wasn't able to put the kind of detail in that she did on the painting she had lots of time for. So we know she's capable of doing it because we've seen that on the left. What... Uh, did I say the left? Yeah, the left. And the one on the right, of course, is within four hours. Now, here are our three finalists, and they're waiting to hear whose name is called to find out who wins the uh, program for today. And the person that wins the program for today will go on to the semifinals of the season. So they have a chance to win. Um, as you can see, my favorite painter did not make the cut, but we're not surprised, right? Of course not. We've This is not our first rodeo. <laughs> So the winner is, dun, 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 who will it be? Well, here it is. There's our winner. So be it. 
and we go on. Thank you for watching with me. This was episode one, season six. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.